Good morning. Happy Sunday, Cornerstone. It is Easter. Traditionally, Easter morning, we greet one another like this. Maybe you could do it with somebody that's sitting next to you. You can text them on the phone, say, the Lord is risen. And the response is, he is risen indeed. We celebrate and we get excited that God is alive and well, doing great things in our lives. Cornerstone, we're praying for you and we're looking forward to hearing the good report of all that God is doing in your life. Just as we get started, let me share a couple of announcements with you. I want to make sure that kids, you're getting your care packages from Fiona and her team and you're doing the challenges. Check out as well, we have Power Kids online today. The links uh, will be on Facebook and at the bottom in the comments on YouTube. Uh, we want you to join us on Sunday nights at 6 to 7 p.m. for prayer meeting. Uh, we're doing it over Zoom. The link is in the email you would have received this morning. And we're meeting on Wednesday nights just as a kind of a hi, how are you? Have coffee uh, on Wednesday nights, 7 to 8 uh, over Zoom as well. The links will be in the emails that go out. If you don't get the emails, just uh, send something into the church and we'll make sure you get on to the list. If you want to give today in the offering, worship the Lord that way. There's two ways you can do that. You can mail it in, uh, put a stamp on an envelope and send it to the church, or you can send it by e-transfer to giving at the cornerstonegan.ca. Let's open in prayer and then we'll sing, we'll hear from the Word of God, have communion together. Let's go. Mighty God, we give you thanks for a good day. We thank you, Lord, that you're doing good things in our lives and in our midst. Move today in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus, because he always lives 
to intercede for them. Always. I love that. I love it when the Bible doesn't hold back. Always intercedes for them. Let's sing this song together today. Everyone needs compassion. A love that's never failing.
All right, Cornerstone, get your Bibles out. We're going to look into the, the Word of the Lord today. It's, it's weird. Today on Easter, all of the churches are empty. I'm sitting here on the steps of Grace United here in Gann, and the church is empty just like Cornerstone is empty, but the good news is Jesus' tomb is empty as well. He's alive. The Son of God, the Son of Man, is risen from the dead, and He is alive and well. That gives us a lot of opportunity to do some great Great things and today God is wanting to do good things in your life to invite you to move a little bit closer to our Heavenly Father to receive more and more and more from Him. So with closed churches you get locked doors. Everywhere you go it's going to be a locked door today. Remember when I was first married, when Rachel and I were first married we tended to get a lot of locked doors. We'd lock ourselves out of our apartment yeah, quite regularly, have to go down to the super's uh, apartment, ask him to open our door, and then he would grudgingly trudge up the stairs, unlock our door. Eventually, he got tired of doing this, so he gave us another key to hide under a mat or under a rock, and, well, wouldn't you know it, we lost that one, too. And then there's the time our son locked the car. Uh, he was a baby, and we gave him the keys to play with, and he locked himself in the car with both sets of our keys. Yeah, that was an interesting conversation with the tow truck driver getting the car unlocked. We, we feel uncomfortable, I think, with locked doors. Because the first thing we wonder is, what in the world is behind this door? Why have they got to lock the door that I can't get through there? What is so interesting and so... What's going on back there? We like open doors. In the Garden of Eden, it's like they just had this wide open door. There's complete freedom, complete liberty, complete joy. They had this perfect relationship uh, between Adam and Eve and God and between Adam and Eve and nature and even between Adam and Eve, just this perfect relationship. And in the middle of that, well, and everything kind of went off the rails and everything went south. And that moment when they sinned, it's almost like they slammed the door on God right in his face. It's not a great feeling. And in that moment, God could have just washed his hands of Adam and even been done with them. But no, he wasn't happy to leave them there. But he decided to open the door a little bit and get his foot in the door to hold it open that just in case something great might happen in the future. Adam and Eve, they tried to cover their nakedness with, with leaves and, and vines and whatever they can find. And God said, no, that's not good enough. It's not your effort. Your effort is not going to solve your sin problem. Your sin will be solved by my effort. He wanted to teach them that lesson. So in that moment, he killed an animal. And this was the first time an animal had been killed. There had never been any death at all in the Garden of Eden. This is the first. And they saw the blood of this animal. They saw the skins and God made them leather jackets. He's trying to teach them that sin is covered by the shedding of innocent blood. He's pointing a straight line from them here all the way to Jesus because they wanted, he wanted them to know that Jesus was going to be the solution for all their problems. Step forward a couple hundred years, several hundred years, thousand years uh, to Egypt. When the Israelites were in bondage there, they were enslaved by Pharaoh, made to make bricks and all kinds of forest labor. In the middle of all these plagues that were coming, in the middle of what uh, this calamity that was coming down on top of them, the last plague was death. And the Israelites were told, if you want to escape this plague of death, you need to take a lamb, a pure, spotless, innocent lamb, kill it and take the blood. And this is kind of gross, but they would put the blood painted around the frame of their door and the death angel would pass over their, their home, hence Passover teaching them again and pushing this lesson even further that that sin is solved that problems are solved by the shedding of innocent blood they hadn't met Jesus yet but here in the middle of this they are getting a direct uh, indicator that God wanted to do something great in their lives keep going a little farther in the Israelites they worship God in a tent in a they call it a tabernacle and in the tabernacle was a series of, of rooms and in the inside was called the holy of holies and the holy of holies was where 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 God resided that's where God was his place on earth and people were not allowed to go in there nobody could go in there or else you die cuz sin can just not be in the presence of God 
One day a year on the Day of Atonement, the high priest would get dressed up. He'd wear all the appropriate clothes. He'd go through all these uh, ceremonial uh, ritual uh, washings and cleanse his body, confess his sin, get himself just ready to go in the Holy of Holies. But even then, they were still scared that something might happen to this priest because you just can't get to where God is when you have sin in your life. And so they would attach bells all around the bottom of the high priest's clothes and put a, a rope tied around his ankle so that, you know, when the bells stopped ringing, that probably meant that he was dead. And they'd use the rope to pull the body out because they weren't able to go in and, and get it. God is holy and he's perfect and you just can't get in to see him. It doesn't work that way. And then God decides to do something. Here, if you got your Bible with you, Cornerstone, flip with me to John chapter 10. We were here a little bit last week and the week before. This is what Jesus in verse 9. He says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He doesn't say I am a gate. I'm not a way. He says I am the way. I'm not a door. I'm the door. You want to be saved and satisfied, you come in through me. And this is an illustration that the disciples would have understood. They got shepherds and sheep. That's what they understood. That was their world. And they understood that when a shepherd was out in the field with his flocks, uh, at night he'd make like this makeshift sheep pen and put the sheep inside and then he would lay down in the doorway. The sheep came in and out through him. So I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and destroy. Uh, pretty serious stuff. We have an enemy who's trying to pull us away from what God is doing in our lives. This enemy wants nothing but bad for us. And Jesus said, but I have come that they might have life and have it to the full. There's a thief, but hey, I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I can save everything. I can fix everything. I can square every circle. Skip down with me to verse 17. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Nobody takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and I have authority to take it back up again. This command I receive from my father. The disciples never understood that Jesus would have to die. That's not something that they wanted to hear about. It's not something they wanted to, to learn and internalize. And Jesus just prophetically gives this to them and he repeats himself. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, they had the Last Supper. After dinner, uh, they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus went up to pray and three times Jesus prays, Father, if there's any way possible, let this cup, let, like the cross, let this just pass from me. I, it's too big. It's too difficult. Three times he prays it. Now, friends, if Jesus had been a door or a way, if there had been other ways, the Father could have said, yeah, absolutely, you don't have to go through this. I've got backup plans and backup to the backup plans. It's okay. I've got this. But Jesus is the door. He's the only way. It's the exclusive entrance if you want to get to the Father. He's the door. And Jesus went to the cross and he took all of our sins on himself as though he were the one that was sinning. He became our perfect lamb. He became those skins in the Garden of, Garden of Eden. And he cries out while on the cross and he says, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because for the first time in all of eternity, the Father and the Son are separated eternally together, eternally one, but now, well, now Jesus became sin. In the presence of God. So he dies on the cross and they lay him in a tomb. They roll a stone up in front. They close the door. They put a seal over the door and they have guards guarding it. The door was locked until today until Easter morning when Jesus comes back to life. Some ladies went to the tomb to check out his body and to prepare his, his body for burial and they found the stone rolled away. They found the uh, soldiers scattered and they found an angel sitting in the tomb saying Jesus is alive. He's risen. He's defeated sin and the grave. 
Jesus said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. Hey, check this out. The next time you go grocery shopping, and I know some of you, you're, you're going to the no frills, you're going to Metro, you're getting there bright and early, and there's a lineup of people waiting to get in. You got a social distance, six feet apart, and they line you up, they let so many people into the store. Check this out. When you go into the store, you walk up to the door, what happens? That door opens wide for you. They are not locking the door at the no frills to keep you from going in. They want you to come in and buy their groceries. All it takes is a bit of faith to step up to the door. You get close enough to that sensor and the door swings wide open. When Jesus says, whoever enters through me will be saved, he's talking about absolutely everyone. And if you step up to his door, if you step up to Jesus, he's not going to turn you away. I don't care how bad your past is. I don't care what your week has been like. I don't care what you've said or what you've done. It doesn't matter how greasy your past is. God invites you to come close and closer and closer. He invites you to come into his fold and into his love. All it takes is a bit of faith to step up to the door. Now check this, just as we close here, as we wrap up, there's a lot of doors we face in our life. The first door we ever come to is the door of birth. We had no say about that. Your parents decided that door for you and they opened it and you came out and somebody was slapping you on the bottom. You had no say in that door. It just happened to you. Someday, hopefully it's a long time from now, there's going to be another door, a door called death. And you're not going to know that day either because death just, it just comes. We have no say about when that day is going to be. We can't control it. But the most important door we're going to walk through in our life is the one that Jesus is opening for us today. There's a verse at the end of the Bible. Jesus is inviting all of us. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anybody would hear my voice and open the door, I will come in. And I, I don't imagine that Jesus is at the door and he's just like doing this little polite little rap. Hello, hello, I'm out here. I imagine that he's pounding on the door. Hey, hey, salvation is here. Salvation has come. There's so much I've got in store for you. And he's inviting you to come closer and closer. So there's nothing we can do to solve our problems, to solve the problem of our sin. There's nothing we can do. All we can do is push it under the rug. And Jesus is coming. He's saying, I will carry that burden for you. I will take that load off your shoulders. Look, check with me right now. We're going to pray and then we're going to move to a time of communion. I want you to do something for me. I want you to try moving a little closer into God's direction. Maybe you're far from God and you'd say, hey, you know what? I, I've never been to church. I don't go to church. I just happen to cross you on Facebook or on YouTube. I want to let you know God loves you. He's got great plans for your life. He's imagining great things and has, has good things in store. He's not asking for your money. He's not asking for your time. All he wants is you to trust him. Would you pray with me today? Maybe you're a Christian and you've just grown a little stale in your walk with God. You've allowed a lot of other things to creep in between you and him and he's calling you back and he's knocking at your heart's door and he's saying, hey, I'm here. Would you let me in? I want to go deeper with you. I want to do great things in your life. Here, let's pray together. You can pray right along with me. Or you can pray the words I'm praying or you can just say amen at the end and agree. Let's pray. Mighty God, we give you thanks that Jesus has solved all of our problems. Sin is no longer an obstacle for us because he's defeated sin and the grave. I thank you, God, that you had great love for us, that you've got great plans for our life. I thank you that we have access to joy and to favor, that we experience the love of God each and every day. Father, today we receive your invitation. We receive your invitation for us to walk with you. Help us to trust you and to put you first in our lives. Lord, I freely confess my sin and ask you to forgive me. Would you move in my life? In Jesus' name, amen. Hebrews 10, 19 to 23. And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain to the 
most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean, and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. I absolutely love that I can come to Jesus the way I am right now. I don't have to have had a good week. I don't have to, you know, have no sin in my past couple days. I don't have to clean myself. I don't need to be ceremonial or ritually clean. I just come to Him the way I am. I can come to Him broken. Uh, I can come to Him weary. I can come to Him in the middle of my difficulty, in the middle of my sin, and He welcomes me to come close. It's not my perfection God is looking for. It's Jesus's. Jesus covers over us solves our problem and we have confidence now to enter into God's presence. I trust you prepared for communion. You have bread, you have juice that you can share. Do so now. Share it amongst your family. Make sure everybody has has some bread, has some juice and is ready uh, to celebrate communion. If if you're not like a church person, you're, you wouldn't say, I don't follow Jesus yet. This is your chance today too. You can be a part of this. Like I said, you don't have to do anything to move in God's direction because God is already moving in yours. You just run to the cupboard, hit pause right now, run to the cupboard and get some bread, get some juice, and you celebrate communion together with us. We do this in remembrance of what Jesus did on the cross. This is Easter. Today is the day that Jesus rose from the dead. It's the day that changed absolutely everything. And so we, we take the, the, the bread, the emblem of his broken body, and we, we break it and, and we, we share it one with another. Take the bread with me now. Break off a piece. Jesus said to his disciples the night that he was betrayed, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me as we take the bread. Let's remember Jesus' broken body that was beaten and bruised and hung on a cross to cover our sins. Let's partake of this together. And after supper, the Bible says that Jesus took the, the, the cup. He filled everybody's cup with wine and he gave it to everybody. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. This is the new thing that I'm doing for you. This is the thing that's going to solve your sin problem. It's going to cover over all your rough patches. It's going to look after every area of your life. So you have the cup in your hands. Let's pray together. Mighty God, we give you thanks for the bread and for the, for the juice, Lord, that represents your broken body, your, bro your shed blood for us. We thank you for all that you do in our lives. And today we receive this. We celebrate your death and your resurrection. Bless us, Jesus. Let's partake of the cup together. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Pray with me just quickly. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the empty grave. We thank you, Lord, that you are no longer dead, but you're alive. And the Bible says that you are sitting now, Jesus, at the right hand of your Father. You're praying for us. Father, I lift up each person that's, that's listening to me today, that's a part of this service, and I ask you, Lord, to fill their heart with gladness. I pray, Lord, that your spirit would fill their home. Father, I pray that you would bring joy and love and favor into their homes. Father, I pray for those who are sick, and I ask you to raise them up. For those that need touches, a touch in their body, Lord, would you strengthen them? People that are worried about their jobs and about money, would you solve that problem? Pour in your blessing, Lord. Father, each and every need, we just call on you, Lord, to do your best, to move in the mighty name of Jesus. Solve every problem. Heal every disease. Set us our feet on solid ground today. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Folks, I want to thank you for being a part of our Easter service today. If you would like, I would love the chance to pray with you. If you have a need or you're worried about, about anything, give the church a call, 613-382-2328. Leave a voicemail or you can email me at pastormike at thecornerstonegan.ca. I would love 
to pray with you today. God bless you folks. Lord be with you.